Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the bank statements practice questions. If you need any extra help in bank statements, if you go to www.corporatemaths.com forward slash content and you look at video 400i, that's the video tutorial on bank statements, and that'll tell you everything you need to know. In this video, we're just going to go through these answers and I'm going to show you how I would answer them. And just one more thing before I get started, in this video, a lot of these questions are calculator questions. And for the sake of keeping the video shorter, I'm just going to be working out if it's a calculator question and I have to add two numbers, I'm just going to add them on the calculator and write it down. If I was doing this for a homework or in a test, I would highly recommend that you write down all your method as well. So for instance, if you're adding two numbers, write, even if it's on a calculator test or in a homework and you're allowed to use your calculator, write those numbers down somewhere, write plus equals and write that down before filling it in just to make sure that you get your method marks so in this video i'm just going to be for instance in a calculator question i might just go straight through and add them and if i say i'm going to be taken away and working at the difference i might just write the answers down but again if you're doing a homework or a test make sure you're writing down all the method okay let's have a look at our first question so our first question question one jack had a bank balance of 170 pound he receives 40 pound from his father and puts it into his bank account what's jack's new bank balance so Jack had £170 in his bank and he receives an extra £40 that he puts into his bank. So to work out his new bank balance, we just need to add 40 onto 170. So 170 plus 40, well adding 30 brings us up to 200, add another 10 would be £210. So Jack would have a bank balance of £210. Okay, question two. So question two says the table below shows the bank balances of four people. So we've got Manisha, she's got £315. Cheslin, he's got £160. Rory's bank balance is negative £20, so he's overdrawn. And we've got Romain's bank balance of £15. And the question asks us, part A says, who has the least money in their bank account? Well, obviously, Rory's got a negative amount. He's got negative £20. He owes the bank £20. So Rory has the least in his bank account. Okay, so question B. Question B says, how much more money does Manisha have than Romain? So Manisha has £315 and Romain has £15. So to work out how much more money Manisha has than Romain, we just need to take away the values. So we need to do 315, how much Manisha has, subtract 15, and that's going to be equal to 300. So that means that Manisha has 300 pound more than Romain, so 300 pound. And our next question, part C. Okay, and part C. Part C says, how much more money does Romain have than Rory? So if we go up and have a look at their bank balances, so Rory has a bank balance of negative £20, so he owes the bank £20, and Romain has £15. So we need to work out how much more money Romain has than Rory. Well, well, let's work out the difference between them. So to get from negative 20 to 15, well, we would add 20 to get to 0, and then we would add another 15 to get to 15. So 20 plus 15 is 35. So Romain has £35 more than Rory, and that's it. So he would have £35 more. So £35. Another way to do it would be to take how much money Romain has, which is 15, and subtract negative 20. And when we subtract a negative, well, we add it on, because whenever you subtract a positive, it gets smaller. When you subtract a negative, it gets bigger. So 15 subtract negative 20 would be equal to 15 plus 20, which is 35 also. So let's have a look at question three. Question three says, here's Ryan's bank statement. So we've got Ryan's bank statement and we've got the date, 1st of April, 2nd of April and 2nd of April. And we've got description. So we've got a starting balance and his starting balance is 50 pound and 80 pence. And then his wages go put into his bank account. He gets a credit, the money's put into his bank account and he gets 74 pound paid to him in wages. So to work out his balance after that 74 pounds put into his bank account, we just need to add the 74 onto 50 pound and 80 pence. So if, and it's a calculator question, we do 50.8 add 74, we get that's equal to 124 pound and 80 pence. So that means he's got a balance of 124 pound and 80 pence, but then he pays his mobile phone bill, which is 60 pound. There's a debit, which means the money's coming out of his account, and that's 60 pound coming out. So if we want to work out his balance after that payment's been made, we need to take the 60 away from 124 pound 80. So if we subtract 60, we get an answer of 64 pound and 80 pence, and that's it. So those are the two missing values filled in. We've completed the bank statement. Okay, let's have a look at question four. So here's question four, and it says, here's a bank statement with some missing values. So we've got three missing values here, and we've been asked to complete the bank statement. So we've got our starting balance of £2,079.45, and then there's a card payment, a debit, so money's coming out of the account of £20. So £20 is paid out of the account. So we need to take this £20 away from his balance. So that would be 
and 45p so we've taken 20 pound away next is an electricity bill so the electricity bill is 125 pound so if we take that away from its balance we'll see what balance is left so 2059 and 45 pence subtract 125 pound gives us 1934 pound and 45 pence and then next he receives his salary and that's money paid into the account and he receives 790 pound and 22 pence so we're going to add that on to his balance of 1934 pound and 45 pence so we'll do 1934.45 plus 790.22 and that gives us a balance of £2,724.67. And that's it, we've completed the bank statement. Okay, let's have a look at question five. So question five says, here's a bank statement with some missing information. So we've got a bank statement, and we've got a starting balance of £884.91. And the rent is paid out, there's a debit, so the money's come out of the account, of £462.75. And we want to work out the balance after that payment's been made. So if we do 884.91, subtract 462.75, we get that's equal to 422 so that means that there's 422 pound and 16 pence in the account after the rent's been paid next the gas bill is paid and that's 53 pound and 56 pence so we now need to take away that from the 422 pound and 16 pence to see what's left so subtract 53.56 and that would leave 368 pound and 60 pence in the bank account and next, the salary is paid into the account. There's a credit of £2,704.34p. So if we add that onto the balance, that will tell us the balance after the salary has been received. So plus £2,704.34p. So that gives us £3,072.94. And that's it. So we've completed the bank statement. OK, let's have a look at question six. So here's question six. We've been given a bank statement and we've been asked to work out these three missing values. We've been asked to complete the bank statement. So on the 9th of October, there's a starting balance of £56.03. And, and then a subscription's paid out of the account. There's a debit for a subscription. We don't know how much it's for, but we know the balance after the subscription's been paid. We know there's £26.03. And so if we work out the difference between the two balances, we can work out how much money was paid out. So if we do £56.03, and subtract 26 pound and three pence that gives us 30 pound so we know the subscription cost 30 pound so that's how much the debit was for next is a refund that's been paid into the account so there's been a refund given back to the person of 41 pound so if we have a balance of 26 pound and three pence and then we add 41 pound that would give 67 pound and three pence and then finally the salary's been paid and the salary is £681.15. So if we add that on to our £67.03, we'll see how much money is in the account then. We'll see what the balance is then. So that's going to give £748.18. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question seven. So here's question seven. And we've got our bank statement and we've got some missing values. And we've been asked to work out these missing values. So there's a starting balance of £449.09. And then a salary is paid into the account. And then there's more money. There's now £2,755.03. and pence. So if we take away these two balances, we can work out how much salary was paid into the account. So if we do 2,755.03, subtract 449.09, .09, that gives £2,305.94. So that means that the salary was £2,305.94p. Then there's a payment to a supermarket of £127.83. And then to work out the balance after that, well, so we know the balance was £2,755.03. And then a payment's made. So if we subtract the payment, we'll see what the balance is left after that. So 2,755.03 subtract 127.83 gives 2,627.20. So after the payment to the supermarket of 127.83 pence is made, there's 2,627 pounds and 20p left in the account. Next, a payment is made for a gym membership. There's a debit, a payment made out of the account for a gym membership. And after that payment's been made, there's 2,592 pounds and 20 pence. So if we subtract these two balances, we can work out how much the account has gone down by. We can work out how much the gym membership was. 
So two thousand six hundred and twenty-seven pounds and twenty pence subtract two thousand five hundred and ninety-two pounds and twenty pence gives thirty-five pound. So that means the gym membership was thirty-five pound. And finally, an electricity bill is paid also, and the account has gone down again from two thousand five hundred and ninety-two pounds and twenty pence down to £2,498.45. So again, if we subtract these two balances, we can work out how much the electricity bill was for. So £2,592.20 subtract £2,498.45 leaves us £93.75. And that's how much the electricity bill was. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question eight. And question eight is a non-calculator question, and we've got a bank statement, and we know this time there's a starting balance, but we don't know what it is. And then some money's been paid into the account. There's a money transfer of 300 pounds that's been paid into the account, and the balance rises to 436 pounds. So let's work out what this starting balance was. So if we take the 300 pound away from the 436 pounds, we'll find out what the starting balance was. So 436 pounds subtract 300 pounds equals 136 pounds. Pounds. So that means the certain balance must be 136 pounds. Next, the balance was 436 pounds, and then some concert tickets were bought, and they cost 75 pounds. So if we do 436 subtract 75, we can work out what the balance was after those tickets were bought. So six take away five is one. Three take away seven. Well, we're going to borrow, so that's going to be three and 13. 13 take away seven is six, and three take away zero is three. So after the concert tickets were bought, the balance is three hundred and sixty-one pounds and zero pence. Next, some wages are paid into the account, and the wages were four hundred and twenty-nine pounds. So we're going to add those onto the balance to find out what the new balance would be. So three hundred and sixty-one add four hundred and twenty-nine, and when we add those, we get one plus nine is ten. So put the zero down, carry the one. Six plus two is eight plus one is nine and three plus four is seven. So after the wages were paid into the account, the balance rises to 790 pounds. And then finally, a bonus is paid into the account and there's a credit, there's a payment paid into the account for the bonus. And that helps the balance rise from 790 pounds up to 835 pounds. So if we work out the difference, that'll tell us how much the bonus was. So let's work out 835 subtract 790. And when we do that, we get five take away zero is five. 3 take away 9, well let's borrow, so that's 7 and 1. 13 take away 9 is 4, and 7 take away 7 is 0. So the bonus was £45, and that's it. So that's our bank statement. Okay, let's have a look at question 9. So here's question 9, and this is a calculator question. And again, remember in this video, I'm just going to be writing down the values, and make sure you write your method down on the page as well. Okay, so we have got our starting balance of £654.11. And then some rent is paid, and the bank balance actually goes down to negative £113.56. So the bank balance actually goes overdrawn. So that means that the rent must have been greater than what was in the account to begin with. So the rent's going to be bigger than this bank balance. So we want to work out the difference between these values to work out how much the rent was. So we could do £654.11 subtract negative £113.56, and that'll tell us how much the rent was. Or another way to do it is, well, if you think about it, £654.11 has been paid. The account would then be zero. And then a further £113.56 must have been paid out of the account to bring it down to negative £113.56. So we could add together the £654.11 and the £113.56, and that would tell us the grand total. Or again, as I said, you could subtract. So 654 point one one plus one hundred and thirteen point five six means the rent was seven hundred and sixty seven pounds and sixty seven pence. So the count now is overdrawn and then the wages are paid into the count. So we're going to add the wages onto whatever the balance was. So that would be negative one hundred and thirteen pounds and fifty six pence plus one thousand four hundred and sixty pounds and fifty five pence. And that gives a new balance of one thousand three hundred and forty six pounds and 99 pence. And then a card payment's made, so another debit, another payment's made out of the account, and it brings the balance from £1,346.99 down to £1,296.99. And if we work out the difference between these, we can work out how much the card payment was for. So £1,346.99 subtract £1,296.99 equals £50. 
So that means a £50 car payment was made. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question 10. So question 10 says, explain the term credit in a bank statement. So in a bank statement, a credit is something that's paid into the account because it helps the balance go up. So a credit, that's it. So credit is an amount paid into a bank account. And part B says, explain the term debit in a bank statement. Well, a debit is a payment made out of a bank account. It's money that's paid out. So a debit, so a debit is an amount paid out of a bank account. Okay, let's have a look at question 11. So question 11 says, here's Claire's bank statement. So we've got our bank statement and we've got the 1st of May, there's a starting balance and it's 530 pounds. And then there's two payments out of the account. There's a gas bill, so a debit for a certain amount and then there'd be a balance. And then there's an electricity bill payment. And then again, that would be another debit. And then after that amount's been paid, there's 360 pounds left in the bank account. And the question says, the ratio of Claire's gas bill to electricity bill in May was two to three complete her bank statement. So first of all, well, we know the account's gone down from £530 down to £360. So if we work out the difference, we can work out how much in total the gas bill and the electricity bill were for. So let's do 530 subtract 360. And when we do that, we get 0 take away 0 is 0. And then 3 take away 6, well, let's borrow, so that's 4 and a 1. 13 take away 6, that's 7, and 4 take away 3, that's 1. So that means that Claire pays out £170 for her gas bill and her electricity bill. So that's how much her account's gone down by between her starting balance and after she's paid her two bills. Now we know the ratio of Claire's gas bill to electricity bill was 2 to 3. So that means if we share the £170 that was paid out in the ratio of 2 to 3, we can work out how much the gas bill was for and how much the electricity bill was for. So 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, so that means there's 5 parts all together, and if we do 170 divided by 5, we can work out how much money is in one part. So 170 divided by 5, well let's do our bus shelter, 5 into 1 doesn't go, so 0, remainder 1. 5 into 17 goes 3 times, remainder 2, and 5 into 20 goes 4 times. So 170 divided by 5 would be £34. Now if we multiply that by 2 and by 3, we can work out how much the gas bill was and how much the electricity bill was. So 34 multiplied by 2, well, that's going to be equal to 68. And 34 multiplied by 3, well, 30 times 3 is equal to 90, and 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 90 plus 12 is 102. And if you check, 68 plus 102 is equal to 170. So let's just change those into pounds. So that means that the 2, the gas bill, was 68 pounds, so the gas bill. And the electricity bill... was equal to £102. So let's go back up, now we know that information, let's go back up to our bank statement and fill in our missing values. So the starting balance was £530. The gas bill, which was £68, was paid out. And then the balance after that, well, if we do 530 take away 68, we'll work out how much the balance would have been after the gas bill was paid. So 530 subtract 68. So zero take away eight, we can't do, so let's borrow, two and one. 10 take away eight is two. 2 take away 6, again well, let's borrow, so 4 and 12. 12 take away 6 is 6, and 4 take away 0 is 4. So after the gas bill was paid, there's £462 in the account. And then finally, the electricity bill was £102, so £102. And that actually works out quite nicely because the balance was £462. And after £102 was paid out, there's 360 left, and that works out perfectly. And that's it. So in this video, this video went through the answers to the bank statement practice questions on corporate maths. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't write down all the method for all these questions, but whenever I was adding each value or subtracting each value, if I was doing this in a homework or in a test, I would highly recommend you write those down to make sure you get your method marks. And if you find this video useful, please like it, please subscribe to Corporate Maths, and thanks very much.